So the E2 reaction happens in a single step via a crowded transition state that will require anti-periplanar geometry between the leaving group and the hydrogen atom. Remembering that anti-periplanar means 180 degrees apart from each other. Let's see what this would look like in practice. So you'll notice that you've been provided a chair conformation. Let's first identify the leaving group. That will be this bromine atom here. Now I know that I want to undergo the E2 reaction because I have a strong base. That's this ETO minus or the ethoxide. And so now I need to decide which of the hydrogen atoms is anti-periplanar. And I have a choice between two, between this yellow hydrogen and this green hydrogen. Now this yellow hydrogen is indeed 180 degrees apart. The leaving groups pointed down, the hydrogens pointed up, like so these are indeed 180 degrees, whereas the one that I've highlighted in green is not. And so now I'm able to draw the mechanism abstracting the correct hydrogen. Here the lone pair will take this hydrogen atom and will form the alkene and the leaving group will depart all in a single step. So you're noticing that there's three arrows going on. I have two electrons from the O minus going to make a new oxygen hydrogen bond. The two electrons that were in the CH bond will go to make the new alkene. And the two electrons in the CBR bond will leave with the bromine to give an anionic bromide leaving group. Here I've shown you the transition state as indicated with this little double dagger, that's what that means. And you can see this geometry in this 180 degrees between the hydrogen and the bromine. This gives us our final product, the alkene here, as well as the ethanol and the bromide. Remember that this transition state here is a proposed structure, it's not something that's spectroscopically observed. So here you see this anti-periplanar geometry in the chair conformation. Beware for it, it's something a lot of people will forget, so just watch out as it'll dictate whether or not a reaction will occur. If I had, for a thought experiment, did not have a hydrogen here, if there was no hydrogen, this reaction would not occur. So just watch out for that as you're going through the E2 reaction.